going to Toronto Lester B Pearson Airport where today I'm doing another one of those uh, cheap seat flights. I managed to book a flight, the cheapest one I can find, uh, and it's with Aer Lingus to Manchester via Dublin. And I'll tell you how much I paid later on, but it's a lot cheaper than the other airlines which are going to the same destination. So anyway, we didn't upgrade this time to any uh, luxury seating or uh, emergency exit. It's just basic economy at the back of the plane. And I'll tell you how much we paid later on. So join us as we fly Aer Lingus all the way to Dublin and then from Dublin to Manchester. Join us. <laughs> found out they actually board their aircraft with Aer Lingus by seat rows rather than the zones which is much nicer because if you sat at the back you get to go on first and it actually makes it a lot quicker so it's like the old-fashioned way okay it's time to board our flight to uh, Dublin on this Aer Lingus Airbus A330 300 series and as you can tell it's very green inside it looks very nice as you walk in um, very impressed, very clean. Uh, the seats I've noticed straight away are not leather, they are a cloth material and we'll find out how comfortable they are very very shortly. But it's a nice layout, uh, the configuration is 242. So we're on a four year old Airbus E330 300. It's nice to see it empty at the moment. On this Ellingus flight, and uh, we're on the. Oh, I can actually go. We're in like here. Uh, we're in row 39, configuration of 242. But at the back here, at row 39, it goes 232. So you actually have a little bit more leg room as the aircraft like this goes thinner. So. Uh, well, what have you dropped? You really sort of switch it. Oh no! TV screen. I've been in far worse cramped conditions on a long haul flight in economy, so this is pretty good. So this is our home. Um, flight's probably going to be under six hours, but we won't know until the captain says, but uh, we're due to land in uh, Dublin at 5.15, which is weird because they do have a noise abatement at Dublin Airport, but Aer Lingus seems to break that rule every night with hundreds of flights every week coming in during the uh, uh, the, the actual curfew time uh, most of them being internationals to meet the, the, the early uh, domestic flights so like what we're going to be doing today uh, we land at 5 15 and we have a 6 30 departure to manchester uh, we have everyone on the doors cabin doors are closed and being armed we're just waiting on the holes to be shot uh, and then we'll be in a position to push back start and complete that's all going to take about 15 minutes once we get into the air, the flight time back to Dublin is 5 hours 45 minutes. 5 hours 45 minutes.
First off, I would highly recommend the use of noise cancelling headphones if you sat towards the rear of the aircraft due to the engine noise. With these on, I heard absolutely nothing apart from the TV, so it was great. But anyway, let's have a look at what's going on here. Uh, the TV screens, uh, average size. The only downside I had was I couldn't read the font on the description of the video. It was, it was too bright and blended in with the, uh, the bright background, so it was hard to read. Anyway, dinner was served. For some reason, I got two pieces of bread, not too sure why. A salad, a brownie, some water, and uh, then I had chicken curry. Uh, the chicken curry was a little dried out, but it tasted good. It was uh, quite flavorful, and I thoroughly actually enjoyed it. I won't say thoroughly, but I did enjoy it. Uh, then I went on to the coffee. Uh, I do like Aer Lingus' coffee. It's probably one of the best ones I've had on a flight. And uh, most of all, I like the lid to put on the cup. That's a really good touch. And then it was time to settle in for the flight of the Atlantic as the sun set over the Atlantic Ocean as we made our way over towards Dublin. Dublin and a very special case meal of Orsha to all our visitors and for those of you returning home you're very welcome home and the local time here is 20 minutes past four. All right finally getting off. Uh, what time is it? 4.50 in the morning. Okay it's now a week later and this is our return flight from Dublin back to Toronto and as you can see right away it's <laughs> the aircraft is uh, a little tatty and worn and that's because the aircraft is uh, over 20 years old it's an a330 200 series it's in its old livery colors and the screens are older the, the seats are starting to feel worn out it was quite uncomfortable there was no air vents above your head like there was on the other aircraft and uh, yeah, it, 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 it was a long flight back home because we actually both were very uncomfortable. We're virtually in, the, we're in row 40 on the way back, so it's one, uh, one row back. Uh, but the seats just felt like the padding had completely gone out of them. Uh, my particular seat had no life vest underneath, so I had to uh, let the flight attendant know, who then came over, was very apologetic and was very grateful, I'll let him know. Because I'm not too sure whether uh, the airlines get fined if they don't check properly. So anyway, I had no life vest under my seat. They were very quick to replace it and put it under there and, and apologize and were very courteous towards me. I didn't give him a hard time, of course. But anyway, if Aer Lingus want to check it out, it should be logged. It was on the uh, 30th of July, uh, row 40, going back to Toronto uh, from Dublin. So anyway, uh, this is the flight taken off from Dublin. Enjoy.
the experience on this flight was nowhere near as good as the flight we had the week before. Uh, we're now halfway through the flight and the cabin lights are still fully lit. Uh, this was really annoying if you're trying to sleep, even trying to watch TV. It was very, very bright. It was actually causing quite, us, both of us a bit of a headache because uh, it was just too bright. We were sat right under these very, very bright white lights. And uh, anyway, I asked the flight attendant if he could dim them, and he says, no, the cabin lights have to remain on for the whole flight, which I found very, very odd. Uh, so anyway, about 20 or 30 minutes later on, though, after I asked, he dimmed them, or someone did. A few years ago, I made a video about a certain sandwich that British Airways served me. Well, I can tell you this. Air Lincoln's sandwich is far, far worse. This is the worst sandwich I've ever had on an airplane ever. It was disgusting. Very dry, extremely dry. You needed water to wash it down constantly. It was like a, sl a slim piece of ham or something and some kind of tomato paste on it, whatever. Uh, but it was just so dry. You, you, you get a hard time chewing it. It was like chewing cardboard. I also want to point out, when you fly with Aer Lingus, there is also no complimentary alcohol. Uh, there's no wine with your meal uh, or anything like that. You have to purchase wine, beer, and spirits. Uh, so keep that in mind. Every other airline across the Atlantic I've flown with, which is many over the 20 years I've been flying, 25 years, I've never, ever had to pay for alcohol when on a transatlantic flight until today. Unless you with one of those like Play Airways, Play Airlines, whatever, which is a low-cost budget airline. But for a national carrier, I kind of found that very, very odd. Now, one good positive thing, I have to say, this is the best coffee I've had on a flight ever. It's actually a really, really nice coffee, I is for. Uh, that's probably the only really good positive I have so far. Um, oh, and this, the waste paper bag. Little things like that help. Uh, anyway, we're not too far away from Toronto, so I'll give you my full thought of it all very shortly. Um, the sandwich at the end, not good. It's, it, I, I prefer to just serve the muffin like they used to. Some airlines on a, on a little snack before you land, you just uh, muffins or uh, something like that. But now they're going for this stupid, crappy, dried out, yakky sandwich, which is just, it's just nasty. So, anyway. Apparently, it's not a brownie. It's like a Rice Krispie chocolate bar. Kind of bit of a crunch to that, it's actually quite nice. So how much did this flight actually cost me? Well, I'm gonna tell you right now. A direct flight, you're looking around about $2,000, and that is before you actually purchase luggage, which is a lot of money. Uh, the cheapest uh, flight one stop was around about $1,320, which is still quite uh, expensive. Anyway, I got this flight when I booked with Aer Lingus back in April for $1,100, which included the $100 extra I paid so we can have the luggage there and back. I think it was like $989, uh, then with the luggage, it was $1,100 taxes in. So uh, it wasn't a bad deal. It's one of the most expensive tickets in economy I've paid for uh, to go over to the UK at any time of the year. But that said, there has been a shortage of pilots. So the uh, supply and demand and stuff like that has had a knock-on effect, meaning uh, airline prices have gone up a lot more this summer due to that ongoing pilot shortage, which hopefully will be resolved in the coming uh, months or year. So overall, what do I think of Aer Lingus? Well, it's going to be a poor review, unfortunately. Uh, it wasn't as, as good as I expected it to be. I thought it was going to be a really good experience. I've heard a lot about Aer Lingus, uh, but I was kind of like disappointed, really. The outbound flight was very, very good. I can't fault the outbound flight, except for the crew were just, uh, just mediocre. On the return, though, to Toronto, it was really, really poor. Uh, the aircraft, uh, the state of it, it was falling apart and stuff like that. The food was bland. It, was, it, was, it wasn't very good at all. Um, and most of all, the service we, we received. I mean, the service actually getting our meals was really good, but none of the flight attendants seemed to smile whatsoever. They were they kind of like, look, 
pissed off all the time, which was kind of odd, I thought. Um, so anyway, that's just my personal opinion. Uh, let me know what you think if you've flown Aer Lingus before and, and compared it to any other airline. Um, but it, safety-wise, the flight was good. Uh, but it's just the uh, aircraft itself was pretty much uncomfortable on that return flight. So the return flight really let them down. It was a very disappointing return leg back to Toronto. So I'm going to give them, out of 10, 5 out of 10. Um, mainly because they lost points on the aircraft on the return being old uh, in poor condition things missing and stuff like that and also the lack of smiling from the crew so uh, that was really it